Hey, welcome back everybody. So on this video here, it's the 10 things that soon could become scarce again in the grocery stores or stores in general. Now it's been one of those weeks, haven't it? You know, on last Monday, I did a video on the trucker strike in America, you know, and things that go along with that whole idea and what could happen. On Wednesday, I did one on the 20 longest lasting items out there. And today we're covering the 10 things that could become scarce again in our stores. So welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching my videos and thank you for tuning in and hitting that like button. I appreciate it. Share those videos with your friends and family. Might just save somebody one of these days. Get their minds working. So let's get going on this. <clears throat> so we got the 10, the top 10 things that could become scarce again in our stores coming soon. It's only a matter of time for some of these items. Now we're going to start right off um, with probably one of the most <laughs> sought after items with everything that's been going on. And that is your cans of soda and say beer. Now, the reason being is, is there is a shortage going on with 10. And it has been reported in the news that 10 is in a high demand right now. And it is, there is a shortage that has taken place in the wonderful world of 10. Now, if you've noticed a lot of the different companies out there, they have cut back on certain types and certain beverages like Coca-Cola, you know, they're only making certain ones, their top brands of their products. You know, I mean, they did away with, I mean, for, for all you people out there, they did away with Tab. I know. Um, they did away with Cherry Coke. They, you know, I mean, they cut a lot of different ones so that they had enough cans to produce their top selling products. There's products that weren't selling as much. All the different manufacturers have cut back on. Now, when it comes to beer and stuff, I really haven't seen anybody cut any of their um, products because most of them are, you know, I mean, you know, you got your Budweiser, Coors Light, whatever you drink, you know, but you also can get it in bottles. Now, preferably, I like bottles better than cans, but cans stack better in the refrigerator. So, you know, it's a give and take. <clears throat> but tin is on the increase of being scarce again because of the high demand. And therefore, those two items, the soda and beer, or anything that's made in 10 cans, could be on the short list, if you want to say. Now, something else that we all really know about, number two, would be your disinfecting products. Your bleach, Lysol, um, Lysol wipes, cleaning products, any of that kind of stuff. The only thing that I found that you could buy through this whole Charlie Victor 19 was Pine Sol. That was the one thing that was always available in the stores when we went to the store. Now that was the only item, at least in my area, that was available during the whole Charlie Victor 19. Now that bleach has come back, um, there are some uh, Lysol wipes that have come back. I haven't seen uh, Lysol in the store. I did score a can of Walmart's Lysol a while back, but I haven't seen it since. I did find little cans of Lysol. It's a Dollar Tree's version, but it's the same ingredients, but they're real small cans. They're only like you know, six inches tall. 
but it's better than nothing if you're looking to have some of that in your stockpile. So you may want to make sure that you're picking up, if you can find the wipes, even though you are limited, um, a lot of those products are limited right now, especially like the Lysol wipes, dis disinfecting wipes, doesn't matter if it's Ly um, Lysol or Walmart's brand or whoever's brand, most of the time they're limited. Um, so if you can find those, <clears throat> when you go to the store, you may want to make sure that you're picking one of those up just to make sure that you do have some type of cleaning products in your home, just in the chance that the whole Charlie Victor 19 goes way south and we're not sure what's going to happen once January rolls around, um, if there will be another shutdown or not. Something else that's getting a little scarce in certain stores, certain parts of the country from what I've been told is some of the cuts of meat, different styles of meat. I noticed in our stores now, um, used to be able to, you could buy spare ribs, a rack of ribs year round, no problem. I mean, they had plenty and they were just always running them on sale for like a buck 99 a pound. Now they have very few to choose from and they're anywhere from 399 to 599 a pound, depending on which store you do go to. Just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. There are certain cuts of meat that are very expensive and there's certain cuts of meat that are hard to find. Um, we did go to the store last weekend and at one of the grocery stores, we noticed they had these ginormous turkeys and they had them for 49 cents a pound. And they were like 30 some odd pounds a piece, you know, um, they're huge. It's like, what are they feeding these things? You know? I mean, if you like turkey a lot, you know, maybe you could, you cook one of those suckers up and you could have several different meals. I mean, I guess you could make, uh, you know, all different types of things with it besides turkey sandwiches. That's what I love. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we could just do turkey sandwiches and that'd be good. But you know, I mean, you could get creative and if you had a big family, that's an easy way and a cheap way to, you know, you're getting 30 pounds. It's a lot of meat. Um, but there's certain cuts of meat and stuff. You know, there's been so many problems with Charlie Victor 19 and a lot of these processing plants and everything else. And so many thousands of workers and stuff have been sick and it's slowed the process. And you know, it's, it's a whole chain reaction. Everything is a chain reaction, but you know, if there's another shutdown or something along that lines, you could see a lot of these products go to the wayside for the time being until everything gets back under control and then wonder how long it's going to take for to get um, back up and running and back online to full capacity to where it can handle the demand that the United States needs. Now, <clears throat> number four would be flour. Now, you probably go to the store and you see that they have plenty of flour and everything on the shelves and all this. There's a few factors that's going to go into this, all right? The reason flour is on this list. For one, it is the holiday season. Now, everybody likes to bake and make things and everything else during the holiday season. It's a given. I mean, it's just what happens. You have people that want to make cookies, they want to make breads, they want to make pies, they want to make um, homemade pasta, whatever it is. This is the perfect time of the year when that one product, flour, is in the most demand. Now, calculate on top of that, the whole Charlie Victor 19 thing, the threats of another shutdown because we don't know what's going to happen after January, and everything compiles on top of itself. You have people that are starting to prep, which is a good thing. You also have people that are starting to put up food and supplies and stuff just on a chance that there is another shutdown. Um, so it's going to tack on to that. And you're going to see that probably towards the end of December, maybe some of the flour may be kind of scarce to get. Now, maybe they keep moving it and, you know, we stay on top of it, but it also all depends on supply and demand and if they can actually get the products to the stores. Number five, 
will be dairy products. Dairy products are, is a, a key component to just about everything. You know, your butter, your cheeses, and all this kind of stuff. And if there's any type of sway or shutdown or anything else, you know, and these plants where they process all this kind of stuff and make the cheeses and uh, cottage cheese and, and yogurts and milk and everything else possibly could be a shortage on that end as well a lot of this stuff is all affected by supply and demand you know uh, number six would be your favorite type of pantry little goodies snacks and stuff like that and make them to a point where it's just not feasible for some of these companies to make this kind of stuff if they're making other products that are more in demand so there may be some loss of some of the snacks and cookies and stuff that you see on some of the major aisles just because they're going to concentrate more on their top number one products than they are of anything else. So take, you know, like Lay's potato chips. They're going to make their basic Lay's potato chip. Some of the flavors and everything else may fall off the wayside, but they'll make their basic Lay's potato chips. See what I'm getting at? But there's so many snacks and everything out there nowadays. It's just, you know, I mean, it's just incredible what's out there. Number seven would be paper goods. Now, we're already in a paper goods shortage. So the chances of it coming back strong and being available on the shelves without limitations are slim to none. So if you want to stock up on paper towels, toilet paper, paper plates, and all that kind of stuff, um, you got to do it a little bit at a time and um, that's the only way you're going to get it start building up a supply you can't walk into the store and buy four rolls of paper towels and in four packages of toilet paper it's just not going to happen you're limited to one you know so one week you buy one the next week you buy the other and you just kind of keep rotating it back and forth like that you know if you do have the walmart delivery service um, and if you pay for that, you know, you can get deliveries as many times as you want. You don't pay for it. Um, I believe there is a $35. I think you have to hit at least 35 bucks. I'm not really sure on that because my orders are always way over 35 bucks. So, um, but I think a minimum is 35 for them to deliver, which is very simple to do. I mean, Look at if you bought a big thing of toilet paper, right? There's like 20 some odd bucks, you know, throw a gallon of milk on it and you got 30, 35 dollars. Um, but all your paper goods and stuff, I mean, they're already shorthanded. Some stores don't even have anything. So that's going to be probably one of the number one things that's really between that and the disinfectant products. They're just not there now. I don't foresee them coming back in any type of strength in any type of near future uh number eight would be canned goods canned goods are already in short supply it's the holiday time this is another one of those holiday ingredients where it's high on demand like i said before you factor in with the fact with uh, charlie victor 19 and it just complicates things a lot of these things are you know you can only you're limited to three in some of the stores now so you can get three cans of green beans or three cans of corn and so on and so forth and you just kind of have to play the system and you know make sure that you know this week you buy this this week you buy that and that's how you're going to have to start building up your stockpile if you find a store where it's not if you go into if you go into walmart i think you can get six cans and if you order online with walmart.com i think they limit it to, to three cans so you get three more cans if you walk into the store and if you don't want to, you get three less, but you can still get three green bean, three corn, three spinach, three potatoes, whatever. It's just three of that one certain product. But like I said before, you know, it is supply and demand time. You know, it's the holiday season and are they going to be able to keep up and keep the stores and shelf stock? I don't know. Um, it doesn't look too promising, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, number nine, 
seeds. If you want to buy any type of seeds, you're going to pay through the nose. I don't care where you go, what you do, you're going to pay for, through the nose for seeds. If you want to have some way to grow your own vegetables and potatoes and things of that nature. If you want to buy those, I would suggest that you get online and try to buy them now because a lot of companies are already pushing, you know, buy your seeds now or reserve your seeds now and everything else because the price of seeds have gone sky high and they are a hot, hot commodity. A lot of people want to have that in their little hands just on the chance that things go south, they can plant something and try to get something to eat that's fresh. You know, it's only a matter of time. And the last one on the list was coins, as in change. Now, we all know during Charlie Victor 19, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of places wasn't giving out any change. There was a chain shortage, okay? Um, you have a lot of people out there that collect silver. So they're always looking through all the silver and all that kind of stuff, trying to find, you know, especially the older coins have more silver in them than the newer coins. So I think coins would be uh, something that could go on the wayside. I wouldn't be surprised within the next um, five years if we see the coin go away to begin with. Um, it's just kind of a nuisance type deal. Um, why charge 98 cents for something if there's no tax on it? Now you gotta give somebody two pennies. Just make it a buck. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just makes everything easier. You know, and through, um, with the whole Charlie Baker 19 thing, the way that most places weren't giving you change or, you know, they, they had no change. Um, a lot of places were begging for change, you know, bring your joint, your coins in. They had, you know, flyers on their doors and stuff, you know, we'll, we'll take your change and, and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> but I think, it made a lot of people realize that, you know what, it's really just one of those nuisance things. Just do away with it and be done with it. So this has been the 10 things that could, and some of them already are, be on the short list come the first of the year. And if you can get your hands on some of this stuff now and you have a way to stockpile it or put it away um, if you have room in your refrigerator, because some things will last a little bit longer than others, uh, paper goods, cleaning stuff, um, soda, beer, whatever, maybe, you know, you might want to stock up on it. Do I think that a lot of this stuff will be gone forever? No, I just think it's just going to be a shortage type deal, and it all depends on if we have to go into another shutdown or not. That is the magical question, really. That's the magical question. And that will reflect back to everything on this list and then some. So I would suggest to everybody out there, the stuff that I listed off, if you can, you know, buy a few extras here or there, however you have to do it, if it's available. Because some of the stuff that I listed off isn't available right now. So it's kind of hard to stock up when it's not available. So this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Everybody out there, stay safe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. I hope you enjoyed my video. And until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.